We are at Pipestone Golf Club in Miamisburg, Ohio. February 27th, sunny, 50 degrees. Dad's right there, I'm gonna kick his ass. Let's do this. First golf round, 2021. What's up everybody, it's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again, it's 2021. You already know what's going down. We're playing Pipestone Golf Club today in Miamisburg, Ohio. Y'all, this place is nice. Look at that. <laughs> We're in Michigan State mask in Ohio State Territory. Oh, yeah. I ain't afraid. You guys know me. So we're out here, Pipestone Golf Club, Miamisburg, Ohio, about uh, 15 minutes south of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we're going to play the Blue Tees today, 70.1 uh, rating, 131 slope, uh, just shy of 6,600 yards. So a pretty tough golf course to start out the year. Um, got a dog leg right, or dog leg left par four, I mean. What? Did that really just happen? Oh my gosh. Topping the first shot of the year. Playing partner tells me hit another one, but no, I'm not taking any mulligans. I'm going to try to play every round like it's a tournament, you know. Our golf season, it's official. We're going to have a golf season this year. We're not getting screwed like last year. So, um, yeah, I also get pretty um, unfortunate on this shot, too. Just Hit the tree branches that stick out there. I tried to draw five wood around that tree because um, I knew I could get to the green if I hit a good shot. I did hit it well. I just started off a little too far right. Um, so, already not off to a good start. We got a pitching wedge into the green. Not a full pitching wedge. It goes a little long, but... <laughs> It's a lot better than those other two shots, right? Got to start somewhere. So um, you notice that um, my playing partners, yeah, we got my dad out here, but uh, we also got some guys um, from the area. Their names were Steve and Tyler. Um, they were also a father-son duo that came out to play. We got paired up with them. So... Tyler is actually a high school golfer himself. He's a, a junior at Lakota East High School, which is in the Dayton area. Um, he plays for their golf team, and he's good. I'm going to show you a few of his shots. He told me his average last year was about a 76, 77, something like that. So, yeah, he's like a five handicap. Or So, yeah, he's really, really good. So I don't think I'll be able to beat him today, but... You never know. I broke 84 times last year. Hopefully we can do it much more this year, make it a consistent thing. But that double bogey is certainly going to set me back a bit. Definitely going to worsen our chances. Um, so now we move into a par 5. Um It's actually a number one handicap hole in the course. There's water over to the left, so obviously I'm... Um, aimed way over to the right as you can see i'm not using my usual driver i mean actually it's probably kind of hard to see but yeah this driver that i'm using today is an old cleveland launcher from like 2008 my other driver um broke this winter um some screw came loose and you can actually see inside of the head so it's just not working properly, so I'm using my backup driver today. And um, it's debut. I mean, I hit it really well. I just pushed it. I was I was aimed right where I'm standing and it? expected it to draw back, and it just didn't move. Um, and I hit a... I don't know. I mean, I hit it well. It just didn't get quite over the hill. You could hear it skim the grass took us some distance off but we're still gonna have a wedge in on this par five Let's see if we can do any better than the wedge shot on number one nice 
Yeah, this one's a whole lot better. Y'all, that is some shot. Heading up to the uh, green, only about six feet behind the pin, but as you can see, it plugged into the side of this mountain. Now, there were a couple holes where we played maximum two putt. Um, this was one of them, and there was one on the back nine. Um, and this was one of the holes where we played max two putt. So I'm in for par, even though I missed that. I know it's like a crazy distance away to be a gimme, but as you can see, even when you putt from uphill, the ball won't come to rest. Yeah, it's impossible for that ball to stop. So, I don't know, Pipestone, this place looks like a pretty upscale facility. So, the guy at the starter booth actually told us that there was going to be a few holes with special pin locations, just so melting snow wouldn't pool into the holes. Um, like on holes with uh, ponds, creeks running through them, they put the pins on top of big hills so melting snow wouldn't collect in them. So if you're wondering, that's why. All right, on to the third hole. Really? I got interrupted for that. Jeez. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the second fairway that I'm hitting from, by the way. Um, up the hill, about 145. No! What is going on? Oh my gosh, what is this start? I mean, I, I know I got a par in the last hole, but a double and now this? What are we, three holes in? Save this for a round where it's just me and dad or just me, not other people watching, and I'm trying to make an impression on them. Jeez. And then I hit that long. Yeah, this this hole, um, you look on the card, 358 par 4. It doesn't look very tough, but that tree overhangs from the fairway. Um, and uh, there's just big hills everywhere. So, I mean, maybe that was me kind of underestimating the hole a little bit. And my ego got the best of me, or but my God, that that was just some terrible stretch of shots right there. Oh man, no, I would have been in a lot better shape if not for that branch, though. My goodness, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even bouncing back. Like, look at this. How long is this bogey putt? Like fifty feet. Oh my gosh. Run, rabbit, run. And I don't hit it hard enough because I'm just mad. So now I got a double putt that's about 10 feet. Yeah. Not good, guys. Give it up for the first triple of the season. I thought we said zero tolerance I, uh, on those. Back. Six iron to there, just to the right of the green from about 175. Yeah, um, I uh, missed my tee shot on number four, by the way. But just going back to what I was saying, um, I, we, we can't have triples this year. We just cannot have triples this year. Doubles once in a while, fine. Triples, no. I, I thought... I thought we prefaced this back in one of my simulator series vlogs that I was saying. Um, but another thing that I was telling you guys, um, I, was, I said something about making an impression on these two guys that I'm playing with. I need to stop thinking like that. 
that is only going to get me into more trouble if I try to impress people with my golf game. Let my let my swing do the talk, and I have been told this numerous times by my grandparents. Sorry, Grandpa, if you're watching this, I know. I, know. I, I, I need to work on it, okay? You, you don't have yeah, to tell okay. me twice, all right? But, yeah, I do really just need to do a better job of just not letting my opponents get in my head. I think Jack Nicholas said, or it, either it was Jack Nicholas or Sam Sneed who said, forget your opponents, always play against par. And uh, if you try to do both, play against par and play against your opponents, six over after four holes it's is what it's going to get you. Uh, another slice. Jeez. I don't know what's up with this slice. You guys have seen me usually draw the ball more than fade it. So this is not normal for me. It's very upsetting. My only saving grace really on this front nine is that a lot of the holes are right next to each other. So instead of ending up in someone's front lawn or in some driveway or in the street, it's ended up on some other hole and um the reason i mention that is because the back nine at this course winds through some suburbs so i gotta pick it up or else this round is not going to be good it's already not good i mean i try not to think about that too much like okay how good can i still make this round I've really been trying hard to stop thinking like that. Not quite far enough. And just focus on playing golf. One shot after the other. And um, just like here, good bunker shot. I, li I like the bunkers. I'm, I'm usually pretty good out of the bunkers. And uh, we're back in this hole a little bit. We got about an eight, nine foot bogey putt down the hill. I'll take bogey on a 431. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, obviously, I'd ha I'd rather have a par, but bogey's never going to get me mad on long par fours like that. So, make the double back the other way. Now, this drive is a lot better. A lot better. Now, if you can see on that right side, those trees... It kind of looks like the hill kind of dives off to the right. Um, so I thought that's where the fairway was, but I was dead wrong. We're in the right rough, and we got to punch out or pitch out. Um, it kind of a little bit of an optic, optical illusion there. So we're back in the fairway at least. Pretty good chip shot. We got... About 184 yards, I believe it was, up the hill. Hitting four iron. You guys know that I've been practicing my four iron. I've told you I've been practicing it. This was pretty good. But uh, it was a little too good, actually. Because I'm behind the green on this big old mound here. So... There's not enough distance to where I can stop this shot. But All right, guys. what I'm going to try to do is bounce the ball on the down slope of the hill and let it roll onto the green. Um, I'm hoping this will work out. It kind of works out. I hit right about where I wanted to hit it. I just thinned it a little bit, so didn't have as much spin to it didn't stop as quickly anyway so i mean we gave ourselves a shot at a par about 25 feet up the hill oh this looks good Ooh, just barely stays out but you know, different day that might have gone in. But um, 
Honestly, that putt, never going to get mad at that putt. All right, so off to the seventh hole, down the hill, back again. There's the drive we're looking for. There we go. All right, so. This is my backup driver. That's one of, that's honestly, you heard Steve say, best drive of the day, not even close. Yeah, I almost hit that 300 yards. Yeah, we only got 58 in. All right. So time for the little pitch shot that I'm hitting here. Right at it. Oh, no, it hit the pin. What? What just happened? Oh, my gosh. No way. It just hit the pin. That has never happened to me before. Right when oh, I needed no. a turning Look point in my round. Off the green. Right when I could have used an eagle, could have just dropped straight down and we would have been just fine. That happens. Yeah. That really pissed me off. I, you know, I hit a great shot and all, but, you know. Sometimes bad breaks just make all the difference. I knew I had to make this. I was not making bogey after hitting the pin on my second shot. I like made a promise to myself that I was at least still going to make par. Ooh, thank God it goes in. But you know what? Whatever gets the job done. All right. Sorry, guys. I missed another shot. Um... It's uh, pin high next to that yellow ball right there on the closer one. It's pin high to the left. Yeah, I missed my tee shot again on a par three. I know. I promise on the back nine I get that's, both of my par my three tee right shots, there. all right? Tyler in the bunker. Yeah, it was too bad because it was also a pretty good shot. Showing you one of Tyler's shots here. I'm going to show a few of his shots throughout the too bad. round. Just, um, he's like a, again, a four or five handicap. So, yeah, he's real good. So, worth showing some of his stuff. So, putt up the hill about 30 feet. Um, just a little bit too heavy handed and got a six footer back the other way. I've made quite a few of these today, though. Yeah, there's another one. That's the one thing keeping me alive right now. The fact that every time I spray a drive really bad, there's a, another hole nearby. And my putting within 10 feet. Crispy three-wood tee shot there. Yeah, I was... Uh, Honestly, kind of worried to hit a fairway wood because on the very first hole, I hit a fairway wood off the tee and I topped it like 80 yards. So, yeah, hit that one a lot better. The fairway ends at about 230 on this hole and then it goes downhill to the green. Um, I actually hit it too good and ran through the fairway and had this wedge shot down the hill. Tyler actually tried to drive the green because he's played the course before, so he knew he could get there. Slippery putt down the hill. I'll tell you what, Pipestone's greens were in excellent condition. and I don't know about excellent, but that putt was pretty good. No complaints. Just one that you just want to cozy up right next to the pin, and it's a bonus if it drops. So... Three pars to finish the nine. Much better than the first five, six holes. That six hole was actually not bad. I almost parred it. It's only about a few inches away from going in. I'm glad that I at least parred seven just because of that terrible break that I got. You know, 
if I had got bogey on that hole, I would have been so pissed off. Like, I probably would have stopped recording for the day if I did not make par on that hole. Like, that's how mad I would have gotten. You know, you're going to get breaks that you don't deserve both ways. But that after just trying to bounce back, trying to jumpstart my round a little bit, that was definitely, at the time, the nail in the coffin. But maybe this is a minor setback for a major comeback. We'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully we can pick up right where we left off on the par streak. Um, heading into the back nine. Fingers crossed, guys. Part two should be out in a few days. See you guys soon.